Anthony Randolph. He's checked in for Andre Drummond. McDermott comes in for Jimmy Butler. And Dion Waiters subbed in for Victor Oladipo. Williams dishes to Waiters. It's Williams with the drive. McDermott, no one around him. No good on the triple. Lakers have gotten three of eight shots to fall for them here in the first quarter. Here's Levine. Dang with the screen for Kobe. Feeds it to Dang. They now take the lead. Dang's got his second basket. You know, I don't think that was a shot they had in mind, but they'll take it. Williams kicks to Verizhao. Outside Randolph. Left side Randolph. McDermott, no one around him. Connects from three-point range. And the Bulls lead by one. They really can't allow him too many open looks like that. I mean, that's just inviting trouble. So timeout called here. The first for Los Angeles. A platoon swap here for the Lakers. Then for the Bulls. Miritich has checked in for Verizhao. Stauskas comes in for Dion Waiters. And it's Marshall in for Williams. Lakers have gone four for nine from the field to start this game off. Bynum the pass to Robinson. Bynum sets a screen for Robinson. Outside jumper. Puts up a three. Oh, he'd like to have that one back. There's the pick. Marshall dishes to Miritich. And some nice ball movement here by Chicago. And Marshall kicks to Stauskas. Shot clock at six. And he gets it to go. And now it's a three-point Bulls lead. And Los Angeles guys uh, shoot just about an even 40% to start. Robinson kicks to Bynum. Dishes it to Schumper. Young outside. Outside for Robinson. Sinks the triple. Robinson's got it all tied up now for the Lakers. Seems like guarding him on the perimeter is not a priority for this defense, but it will become one if he continues to knock them down. Miritich sets the screen for Marshall. Puts it up from 15. And the rebound goes to Nate Robinson. Defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Bynum sets a screen for Robinson. He dishes it to Schumper. From 18 feet away, another miss by Shumpert. Now Chicago's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Marshall passes to McDermott, and that one's good. McDermott's got five. Robinson with it. Bynum sets a screen for Robinson. And a foul on the shot. He'll go to the strike for two. It's going to be on Anthony Randolph. Well, it wasn't too long ago. We can remember Andrew Bynum being one of the best centers in the entire league. But, Steve, after his knee injuries, he just doesn't look the same. Yeah, it's a shame, Kevin. And it, it happens periodically with big men. You know, they're carrying so much more weight that you worry about those feet and ankles and knees and uh, it's too bad because Bynum was really coming into his own when he went down with the injuries. That's good from Andrew Bynum. With Bynum he actually said that he feels like a shell of himself when he first returned to play last year. Couldn't have been easy for him and he questioned if he'll ever get his explosiveness back ever. His knees really 
in a bad way. That one is no good. And with Bynum, he might not get that explosiveness back, but he still has the size and skill set to be an effective center in the league. It won't be easy. He'll have to make a lot of adjustments, but you still can't teach his size and touch. Kimball Marshall has good size at the point guard position. I list him at 6'4 plus, and he really is an excellent passer. Great vision, and throughout his time in college and his short time in the NBA, He's averaged more assists than points. Kendall Marshall, a good assist to turnover ratio, but his lack of mobility, I think, continues to hurt him defensively. Well, he's probably never going to be great at that end of the floor just because he doesn't have the foot speed you need to stay in front of people. But he's very smart. Uh, he relies on his savvy and his positioning. Uh, and, and all in all, you know, a very good season last year for the Lakers. Here's Young. The Bulls getting the bucket. The drive by Shumpert. And that one's good. Shumpert's got his first points of the game. Chicago leading by three. Now Marshall. Fifty seconds left in the first quarter. Here's Tauskas. Started by Shumpert. And that one's good. And the Bulls lead by five. Outside Robinson. Right side Robinson. Out to Shumpert. There's the pass to Young. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact, and he'll shoot two. Los Angeles shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. Two shots. First free throw is good. And so Young nails them both. He's always been extremely reliable at the line, and today's been no different. And here is Marshall. Miritich sets the screen for Marshall. Over to the left wing. Here's Stauskas. No good with the triple. At the end of one quarter of play, still a close game. Bulls out front, they lead by three. And we'll be back in just a moment with the start of the second quarter. And so far, it's been a closely contested game as we get the second quarter up and going. Looking at what we've seen for the Bulls, what do you guys think? You get a chance early on to see their depth. They got a nice effort from their bench players early in this game. Yes, yeah, Steve, I tell you what, their subs have really packed the punch for them so far. Nick Young is up there with Ryan Anderson. Then there's Amon Shump. Then it's Robinson. And it's Bynum in the center position. That's the group for the Lakers to start the second quarter. Shumpert running, he can go all the way. Finished off the break. Shumpert's got the first basket of the second quarter for the Lakers. That is such good work to make this a one possession game. Terrific steal to get it all started. Yes, yeah, one thing to create a turnover, but to so alertly turn it into a transition opportunity. That's even better. 
But here it is again. On a lot of their possessions this first half, they've established great position inside. Yeah, getting the ball into the post should be their first option every time down. Force the defense to, to adapt and adjust. Anderson with the ball. Now guarded by Miritich. That was not pretty there. You got to make that one, but maybe that's not his range. Bulls were a team last year that just never gave up. That was their identity. They didn't have a ton of talent, but they played with a toughness and a defensive mentality that always seemed to keep them moving forward. Here's Trummond. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. Boy, he's just dangling from the rim after sending it through there. You can see which team now has the swagger Clark right now. Yeah, hey, well, exactly. It's with them. Yeah, but you don't want to do too much to get an opponent riled up, though, either. Shumper dishes to Anderson. A fadeaway. Did you see his balance there, guys? Really faded away. I think that's why he missed. In the corner, it's McDermott. And Marshall kicks to Miritich. Waiters passes to McDermott. Count that one. And it's a seven-point Chicago lead. Well, to follow up on the Bulls, that never say die attitude, Clark kept them in a lot of road games. Ended up winning 21 last year. And Kevin, that put them just over 500 on the road as a team, and that's really all you can hope for when you lose your star player early in the season. Los Angeles calls timeout. The Los Angeles Lakers, the NBA's most successful franchise over the last three decades, since 1980, 10 guys count them 10 titles that's remarkable and they've led the way from a business standpoint as well kevin they, they pioneered televising their home games where some teams have worried about undercutting ticket sales uh, a lot of great ideas and, and and dynamics that have helped this franchise become what it is the ball teams changing it up here The Lakers with the ball. Seven point differential. And you know, for the Lakers, no competition from football. There's not a football, a pro football team in the LA market. It's one of the top two markets in the country, and it is a basketball town. You look at their TV deal, which is really mind boggling. It's worth about $3.6 billion over 20 years. Um, that gives you a lot of financial firepower. There. The free throw drops for Kobe. Well, guys, you look at the financial resources for the Lakers, not the same advantage that it once was because with the most recent CBA, uh, it's really restricted spending. And that, the question is, how will that impact the Lakers moving forward? And he makes both free throws. A lot of times when a great player hangs it up, they take some time to find themselves or just relax, but Kobe, that he wants to stay heavily involved in the NBA when his playing days are over. Not a huge surprise if you think about just how competitive he is. And Oladipo kicks to Waiters. Just five to shoot. No good. So the Lakers will take it the other way. Levine passes to Bryant. Here's Levine. He's guarded by Waiter. Levine can't hit. And Clark, for Kobe in his post-playing career, you have to think he would like to stay involved with the Lakers on some level, given that he has spent his whole career, well, he is his most formative years with the organization. You know, that could be true, Kevin, from a front office standpoint, but if he wants to try his hand at coaching, he might have to be open to moving around for a little bit. Levine gets to Kobe. They double-team Kobe. Hill. And he hits it just before the shot clock expires. Sometimes folks forget about his decent mid-range jumper. He can knock those down all game given a chance. Now here's Waiters. And power down the jam. 
That's what we came to see. Aggressive, assertive.